Intro to Brightspace Quizzes, a Brightspace tip brought to you by the Anne Arundel County Public Schools Office of Instructional Technology. So in this video, because it is an introduction to Brightspace Quizzes, it isn't our intention to go into a deep dive into every single question type or even all of the settings that you might choose when building a quiz. What we want to do is get an overview of the question types that are available, how to create those, and a couple of common settings that many teachers will want to look at and choose to use when building an assessment for their students. So the first step to creating an assessment for our students in Brightspace is to open your course and navigate to the unit you want to build an assessment for. Then we're going to click on Create New and choose Quiz. This first window that opens allows you to type in the name for your quiz and an optional field for you to add a description for your quiz. This might be where you give students instructions for how many questions are included in the assessment, uh, what types of questions, and even the content that will be covered in this assessment. Now that I have my name and description, I'm ready to click Create and Insert. Then we click Go to Quiz to open the quiz editor and begin building. Across the top of the quiz editor, we have lots of tabs and options for settings that we'll return to a little bit later in the video. Right here on the Properties tab, there's lots of information, and again, we'll talk about those in a few minutes, because really the first step to building a quiz is to get some questions in there. So I'm going to click here on Add and Edit Questions, approximately in the middle of the page, to begin to get some content into my quiz. When you click to begin building, you have the option to add questions from scratch or import existing questions. We're going to choose the option to add and new questions because again, we want you to see the process. Here's all of the question types that are available in Brightspace when you're building a quiz. Some of these question types are very common, like true and false and multiple choice. Others of them might need a little bit more explanation, like what's the difference between written response and short answer, and what does a significant figures question look like? One of the resources linked below the video in the course is the Brightspace community types of questions resource here uh, that will tell you specifically what each question type is and what it's designed to assess and there are even clickable links for you to get detailed instructions for how to create that type of question here in the Brightspace environment. So please check it out to get more familiar with what each of these question types will actually allow you to assess when building a quiz in Brightspace. I'm going to return to my quiz editor and I'm going to select a pretty standard option here and that is multiple choice. You can see here that it has the field to enter in my question text. It has four answer choices right now. If I don't want to give the students four answer choices, I can click the X over here to remove one or click the Add Answer option to add additional choices. Once I have my question text entered in and all of my answer choices, I'm simply going to click next to the answer choice that is correct to establish the answer key here in Brightspace. Then we have two options at the bottom. First is to randomize the answer order. If I am concerned about students sharing answer information or possibly being packed in a little bit tight and looking over their neighbor's shoulder, then this randomize answer order is one option to prevent that. Then I have the option here to change the point value. Questions will default to one point, but if I want it to be worth more, I can simply click and type in another number. The last field before we're ready to click save at the bottom is to take a look at the options here in the upper right hand corner. Options allow you to add additional things to this question, like feedback for students or a hint. You can add a short description for the question. We can even customize the weight for grading of the question and add enumeration, like A, B, or C in front of the question type. By default, Brightspace does not include any information like that. Once I've got everything set up correctly for my question and those additional options, I can click on Save. But there is one other option here in the drop down next to Save, and that is the Save and New, or Save and Create a New Question. Now it is important to note that the New Question option will immediately open another multiple choice question, and that saves me an extra step of having to choose multiple choice from the drop 
drop-down list of question types if my next question is going to be the same type that I'm currently working on. If my next question is going to be a fill-in-the-blank or a short answer or anything other than multiple choice, I don't want to click on Save and New. Instead, I want to click on Save and then I want to click the drop down next to add, choose new question, and once again select the question type for my next question. So now let's pretend that I've built all of the questions that I want to include in my assessment. Let's turn our attention to some of the settings that you can choose to add through the tabs across the top of the quiz editor here. Starting with the properties, we have the option to create quiz categories. So if you commonly include things like warm-ups, exit tickets, pre-quizzes, and tests, you can categorize those so that when you're viewing your assessments under your quiz window, they will be grouped together by those categories. The next option for quiz que questions includes pages. By default, every question in the assessment will be shown or displayed for students on one single page. But if I want to section my quiz, and especially if I want students to be prevented from moving backwards in the quiz, paging is a great way to do that. Let's take the example, maybe I'm going to ask the students to recall a specific mathematic formula that we just learned and apply it to a question. And then later in the quiz, I'm going to give them that same formula for a different question and purpose. I don't want them to now be able to take the information that I gave them and go backwards to the question where they could not recall the formula to answer that one. So paging is one way to do that. In addition to being able to shuffle the order of question answers, we can also shuffle the order of the questions themselves. Again, one more measure to prevent the students from sharing questions and answers with one another. Coming down here to the bottom, we have the description and introduction field. Now remember when we were initially creating the quiz where we typed in the name of the quiz, we had that option to type in a description, but by default, both the description and the introduction information are off, meaning not viewable to the students. So if I did choose to type in a description, I want to click to turn that on and make that viewable to the students. The second tab that we're going to visit here is the Restrictions tab. There are a handful of options under Restrictions that teachers might choose to use. For example, if you want to establish a due date for your assessment, you can do that here under the Restrictions. Similarly, you can even establish availability. For example, maybe I don't want my third period students to see this assessment until it is exactly time for third period class to start. I can establish a start date and even a time. If if I want to enforce that due date, prevent anybody from turning in this assessment after it's been due, establishing the end date and time will do that as well. Another useful option here on the Restrictions tab are release conditions. What do I want students to do before they get to the quiz? Release conditions are especially great if you're planning to be out for a day and you're going to have a substitute give the students an assignment followed by a short quiz. You can enforce that the students will complete the assignment before they can even access the quiz. Down here at the bottom, we have options like setting a time limit. You can tell them how long you think this assessment should take, or you can strictly enforce a time limit if you need to have a timed assessment. Let's take a brief look at an option that I think a lot of teachers might choose to use under the Assessment tab here. Right here at the top, we have the option to allow this grade to be released immediately as soon as the student completes the assessment. If all of the items in there are set to be graded automatically and you want the student to immediately see their score, checking this box would do that. Next we have the Objectives tab where you can associate any learning objectives with your assessment that you might like to include. Then under the Submission Views, we have the option to determine what our students will see when they get their assessment results. For example, do we want them to see every question? Do we want them to know which ones they got incorrect, which ones they got correct, all of their responses, and so on. Our final stop on our tabs is the option to get reports from an assessment. When you click to add a report, you get to name the report here at the top and choose the exact information that you would like to be included in this report 
when it is run. For all of your settings, you'll want to click on Save, and then before exiting out of the quiz editor, you'll want to click on Save and Close, everything from writing the questions to all of those individual settings and options that you selected. And that's a quick overview of quizzes in Brightspace.